But what I see happen with a lot of entrepreneurs is they think the first thing you have to do when you start a company is hire an HR manager. Um, you better hire an accountant. Well, I better hire an IT guy. Well, guess what? You don't even have any sales yet, buddy. You know, uh -huh. you can't afford to hire all these people. So what do you do? You either do it yourself and you do things that you're not good at or you know, I like to outsource. I like to recommend to people that, you know what, don't hire a bunch of people at the beginning necessarily if you're not funded for that. Go ahead and pay people to do it part-time. It's way less expensive to hire an expert uh, to work part-time on your IT, to work part-time on your bookkeeping or accounting, to work part-time on your legal. <laughs>
when we're banging, we're at our very best at our very best opportunity. But what I see happening with entrepreneurs is they're not always at their very best. They kind of get stuck in no man's land, in between hanging, in between banging. And it's usually when they uh, they run into these little obstacles. It could be trying to raise money. Okay. Uh, it could be trying to make a sale. It might be creating the right culture for our team. I mean, these problems, they, uh, they surface in all shapes and sizes, and they, ha- they happen every day. But, you know, I, uh, if you look around the uh, uh, mark tank here, right up on the wall, it says, yes, if, right? Yes, if is the big uh, note that I, I sort of live by that mantra, yes, if, right? If we overcome enough of those little obstacles, anything is possible. You could be a C student from Oakmont High School. You could be a, a guy who got shot in Afghanistan and doesn't know what he's going to do with his life after he gets out. And you know what? If you find something you love, you can overcome those obstacles and have some fun doing it. Oh, I love that. And I've heard you talk about the, the, uh, the three S's, right? The show up, shock them, and systematize sure. routine, right? Yes. So for those entrepreneurs out there growing a business or thinking about wanting to get into business, Talk to us about what that show up wow. shock and I think a lot of us get, uh, you know, they, we, get, we sort of get stuck uh, in hesitation mode and we don't know whether to start or not. We're, we're uh, wondering, we're on the sideline, right? We're not, when you're wondering, you're not banging, by the way. Right. When you're wondering, when you're, ah, uh, should I ask her to dance? Or, uh-huh. uh, you know, what, should I go to the dance? Should I show up? Right? It's like, you got to show up. In life, you must show up. And I think uh, so many times, I mean, some people say winning, showing up is half of the battle, right, in winning. And I think that's for sure uh, the case in entrepreneurship. you got to show up. And I I think besides just showing up, you have to show up with what I call a violence of action. So you got to show up. And then then when you do, great things happen, right? All kinds of opportunity uh, begins to uh, be created. Uh, and I talk about Shockem, right? We have to have a differentiated product. We have to have something that's memorable, right? That's Shockem, Shockem and Lockem. And then hopefully, uh, if we're successful enough, we've overcome a few obstacles and we begin to systematize so we can scale our company. I mean, I think that's what entrepreneurship's all about. Once you start scaling the company, the opportunities go through the roof for your friends, for your teammates, for your family, um, and for sure for everybody in your community. So to me, once you start systematizing and scaling, that's what it's all about. That's when the magic happens. So at Haney Biz, when you're building this platform, right, and you think about the show up, shock them, and systematize uh, mantra or or, or uh, motto, where do you feel like Haney Biz and your group of companies kind of fit into that piece? Uh-huh. Well, I think each of our businesses, we're invested into a couple dozen businesses. I own, uh, you know, some that are doing uh, – you know, over 50 million in sales, and we've got some that are in their infancy. So it's kind of a cool mix. And I think that that's kind of, uh, that's what I see happen with a lot of entrepreneurs is uh, they're alone. We're here at Haney Biz. There are so many uh, businesses that are helping other businesses, right? right. So the one that's doing uh, 50 million can help the uh, the startup because we've been there, done that. And that's kind of the beauty of, uh, of being in a system like Haney Biz. And this is beginning to sound like I'm selling us, but I think the moral of the story is how do you over Come these obstacles that you're yeah. talking about, Marcus. Don't be alone. Don't. Nobody uh, builds a great business alone. We have to have business partners. Sometimes those are uh, uh, business partners where they're equity partners, like what we have here at Haney Business Biz, where I do investments. Sometimes it's outsourced business partners, but and sometimes it's employees and teammates. But nobody builds a great. Uh, venture alone. Well, where would you think the best uh, starting point for an entrepreneur? Taking on capital, maybe outsourcing some of the work they're not good at, or bringing on a uh, an equity partner. Where, where do you what do you think is the best? Uh, uh, I mean, obviously it depends yeah. per uh, entrepreneur, but it does depend. I think it starts with the mindset. You know, we talked about showing up. I think a great place to uh, to to start is to show up and uh, and uh, and see how it goes, right? And I think at that point you sort of do a self assessment, like, okay, am I cut out for this thing? Am I uh, what am I good at? What seems to come naturally and more easy for me? And then I think you should backfill in those areas where you suck. Okay. <laughs> right. So there's nobody. Look, we all have gifts, right? My gift is around building teams. Um, your gift is I'm around. I'm still figuring it out. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> you know, hey, you know, you're a Marine Corps guy. So uh, I mean, think in the Marine Corps, you were known for being one of those guys that gets out in front, right? You're the first one to take a bullet. Uh, yes, there in your squad, so. right? And come home. But I mean, you're one of those guys that gets out there in the front, leading by example. 
And so sometimes that's what you bring. You bring the energy. You bring the team building. You bring the courage. Um, you bring something that's maybe uh, more intangible. Other people bring technical expertise, right? Other, and some others may bring um, some other area of aspect that helps the team to win. But I think we all, that's the thing. Each of us has something great inside, and I think it's that self-assessment uh, to find out what we really have inside and help put the people in our lives that help bring out that greatness. And so once you decide what that greatness you have inside of you, you are leveraging that hanging or bang. Are you hanging or banging question right. as your own self-assessment on, hey, am I going after that stuff that I am great right. at today, Bang right it. now, and the very best opportunity? Is that is that right. at your very process? best? So that's the thing. If you're doing stuff like, uh, so a guy like me who's good at building teams, if I'm uh, sitting there trying to uh, input numbers into a spreadsheet and uh, get them uh, recirculated and reconfigured uh, in, re in a report. waste your time. Process, come on, I'm not good at it. If I was good at it, I mean, there are people that are great at that, Absolutely. right? I have those people on my team. Yep, okay. We have uh, accountants uh, on our team that can spit out uh, all kinds of detailed reports for me to decipher and help uh, grow sales and grow the team. I can use that information, but me typing it in uh, takes hours where I can have somebody else, you know, I can clap my hands and the report gets printed out. Absolutely. So you see bookkeeping and accounting as something that you personally outsource. What do you see yeah. as another good outsourceable uh, I think definitely uh, bookkeeping and accounting. If you're not good at it, it's a great thing to outsource. Right. IT, great thing to outsource. I mean, if you uh, don't have the technical chops inside, why would you uh, take care of your own IT, your, your, your computers and that kind of thing? If you're good at that already and you can do that in your sleep, well, there's no reason to outsource it. You can handle that yourself. But what I see happen with a lot of entrepreneurs is they think the first First thing you have to do when you start a company is hire an HR manager. Yeah. Um, you got better hire an accountant. Well, I better hire an IT guy. Well, guess what? You don't even have any sales yet, buddy. You know, uh -huh. you can't afford to hire all these people. So what do you do? You either do it yourself and you do things that you're not good at or you know, I like to outsource. I like to recommend to people that, you know what? Don't hire a bunch of people at the beginning necessarily if you're not funded for that go ahead and pay people to do it part-time. It's way less expensive to hire an expert uh, to work part-time on your IT, to work part-time on your bookkeeping or accounting, to work part-time on your legal uh, and finance. Why would you bring in uh, in-house experts Ver or why would you do it yourself when you're not good at it? Right. Or why would you hire somebody who's more of a generalist and is not great at any of those things when the expertise is sitting there for the taking? And you can't really manage those people either, right? That well, if you don't know what you're talking about and you're trying uh -huh. to lead them, it's like, man, I really have a hard time putting you in the right yeah. position here, right. pal. A lot of times it's hard to train and develop accountants when you're not an accountant, right? <laughs> so yeah, that's a very difficult thing to do. And then one drawback, I guess, I would see, and I'd like to hear your position on this of outsourcing services and things like that is the inability to have that teamwork and that uh, that cohesive unit. Have, have you seen anything uh, in those yeah. categories be something that you might want to shy away from? Well, the right business partner partner makes all the difference in the world. Where we're talking if we're talking about an equity partner, um, the right business partner can make all the difference. If it's an outsource partner, you need somebody who's human, somebody who thinks like an entrepreneur. You want oh, yeah. somebody who can make it easy to work hard. What, what I see with entrepreneurs is they aren't afraid of hard work, right? They, they, if, if they're working on the things that are really going to drive opportunity, they drive sales, drive uh, really great things for the company, you know, they'll work their butts off, but they get mired in the minutia, right? Ah. And when you get mired in minutia, you know, that is is a complete and total waste of time. And so you want somebody who will work with you to understand what you're good at, take that minutia off your plate. They can knock it out uh, a lot more effectively uh, from a cost standpoint. And also, they're going to do a good job because, I mean, if you input the books incorrectly, uh, undoing those is not an easy thing to do. I, yes, I've been there and been down that road. And, you know, just thinking about as these entrepreneurs grow and progress and they're listening to the show, wanting to talk with you, you know, I've heard you have a markism. I don't know if you brought it up in a while. It's your three barriers to banging. Yeah. Right? So you got these guys who are maybe not uh, not doing their very best on the very best opportunity. They think they're banging, yep. but 
they're yet not. there's they're they're not. They're working hard, but they're not banging. They're not at their very best at their very best opportunity. I'm glad we're diving into this a little bit, Marcus, because it's very important. We get stuck thinking that we're at our very best, our very best opportunity, but you know it's not. So spending, yeah, you figure, figure, figure. You don't you don't make any money. Figure, figure, figure. Right. You make money by swinging the hammer. Right. right? You make money by communicating with your com- customers. You create opportunity when you're doing what you're best at. So what are the barriers? Right. I, I always talk about lack of a sustainable passion, which is which is really about doing what you love. And then obviously misallocation of resources. We've been talking about, you know, if you're not doing the things uh, that are most appropriate at the right time, you know, that's a misallocation of resources. If you're working on the QuickBooks and you're not an accountant, right? So I think that's a misallocation of resources. But the other thing too, and if you look around uh, our offices here, Mark, you have all the things that remind me of why I do what we, what we do. And so I think if you keep the, uh, the, the purpose in mind, front of mind. I call it a barrier to banging, inattention to your purpose. And so what I like to do is uh, keep that purpose front of mind. Everywhere I go, I put myself uh, around people, around mantras that inspire me to remember uh, why I am doing what I'm doing. Because we all know in entrepreneurship, it gets a little rough at times. No doubt. And you need sometimes that reminder of why you started this thing in the first place. I love those. The three barriers to bang. And you got to get over that. But, you know, a lot of these times you find yourself in, in uh, you're not hanging and you're not banging, right? You have these things. How do you kind of find yourself back into that rhythm of banging and not looking at opportunities like they're scary or that you might not be able to obtain them due to your business model or whatever the case may be? But, you know, you need to get to that position where you're working on your best opportunity. How do you get back into that? Well, here we are, fourth quarter of the year, right? We're in the middle of uh, November, toward the end of November, and people are starting to think about their goals for 2019, right? And, you know, anytime we're sitting there doing that assessment, um, I think it's important to step back. Okay. Step back from the situation. I think Thanksgiving was a great time for guys like me and you to do that. Our hang time is a time to step back, reflect on where we've been, think about our dream and where we're going. And uh, maybe it's time to cut the things uh, out in our lives that are are really not contributing to in any great way to the success. You know, they, we always hear about the 80-20 rule, right? Uh, 20% of the things we work on uh, uh, make up for like 80% of the progress rest right. in our lives. So I think if you step back from things, think about narrowing down what you're, work at, work, what you're working on. And I think you'll find that taking some of that uh, stuff that you're not as good at, um, that's not as uh, closely uh, aligned to your goals, taking that stuff out of your life, dishing it off, whether you outsource it or whether you just eliminate it, I think is a good thing to do. So the first thing I would say, Mark, is, is step back and make an assessment and figure out you know, what is back to basics for Marcus Haney. What is back to basics for Mark Haney? What is back to basics if I'm an entrepreneur? I love that. And, you know, that's what you do with, I hear you talking to a lot of your investments and things like that. It's like back to basics. And I think that there is probably a harder time for a lot of folks that are more, uh, you know, diverse in their business or maybe more spread out that have the ability to step back from different projects and things like that. Because I remember when you started uh, the concrete company with Bob Garrison, right? You were out there selling concrete. You're over here trying to run a real estate business, start a radio show. How do you step back from that? That yeah. to me is the toughest part uh, from, well, for you. Well, back for me is around putting great people in my life. Uh, we could call it outsourcing. I do it uh, mainly through employees, through uh, business partners, um, through people that have my back through thick and thin, but you brought up Bob Garrison. I think he's the perfect example of what we've been talking about today, Marcus. So here I am. uh, I just sold my company and I'm driving down the road. I'm still working for the company. This was seven or eight years ago. Sell the company. I'm still helping through the transition. And I'm driving down the road on the way to the office. uh, Not a care in the world other than how I'm going to integrate these companies that, uh, that we put together. And I get a phone call. And there it is. You mentioned Bob Garrison. It's Bob's wife on the phone. And she's like, Mark, uh, I think Bob needs your help. And I'm like, what? What's going on? You need some help. He's like, well, so Bob owns a construction company, and his focus is concrete. And um, so I said, well, what's wrong, Ronnie? He's like, well, I just need you to talk to Bob. I feel like he's uh, he's a little down on himself. So, you know, I don't think he's he's at his best. Uh And I'm like, ah, okay. So I hung up the phone. I thought to myself, you know, what am I going to say to Bob? What's, you know, she, Ronnie didn't really want to dive into it. How do I approach this? So yeah. I'm like, so I finally decide I'm just going to confront the issue. Bob, 
Ronnie called me. What's up? Right. So he he goes on to say, "Look, I'm having these uh, I'm having these doubts." And I said, "Well, Bob, I'm at the point in time in my life where if I wrapped up with some of the stuff I'm working on." I might be the kind of guy that would be looking for a partner like you. Bob was a guy that I grew up with, a guy that I had known forever. He built a house for me uh, years before that. We had worked on many uh, concrete projects together. So I knew Bob. I knew his work ethic. I mean, I knew how hard he worked when we played football together as little kids, right? So I know Bob. I love Bob, and I would do anything to help this guy. So, Bob, you bring me on as a business partner. I'll break my back uh, to help you succeed in business. So there we go. We start, uh, we bring on, he brings on his, uh, his business partner, Mark. And so it's the Mark and Bob show and we grew sales, but, uh, you know what? It wasn't enough. It wasn't until I brought on my accounting team to help out. Bob's doing the QuickBooks. Bob's trying to wear every hat. I came in and started partnering with him to, to help drive sales, which I know I could do. But it wasn't until I brought on some of my CPA uh, buddies uh, that now are, we started the uh, outsourcing. Yeah, we outsourced to one of my companies. That really freed Bob up to, uh, to go out and do a better job uh, with what he's great at, right? Bob, now his construction company, his concrete company is thriving. It is firing on all cylinders, right? Because he's, he's not doing things that he's not as good at. Mm. He has other people figure, figure, figure out the QuickBooks. Uh, other people sp- spitting out the reports that help him to do what he wants. He's been able to put the other people in his life so that we could bring out the greatness in Bob because the customers love Bob. Nobody knows concrete. Like Bob Garrison, and we now now the world is beginning to know that Bob Garrison is the concrete guru of the Sacramento region. But people did not know that before because he was stuck figure, figure, figure on QuickBooks. Now he's Bob Garrison, plaster concrete construction, doing concrete all over the region. So it's a story of outsourcing. It's a story of bringing on the right business partner. It's a story of winning. And so I'm so proud of Bob uh, for what he's done for his family, uh, for the jobs that he's created at Placer. I mean, it's a success story in the making. And I think it all starts with having the courage uh, to bring up, uh, you know, the idea of facing Uh, these issues where you might need to bring on a business partner. So anybody who's out there thinking about, you know, where am I at in this struggle? What obstacles uh, am I facing? Uh, How am I going to get through them? All I can say is it might be outsourcing. Um, It might be hiring the right employees. It might be uh, bringing on the right business partners. But you know what? It's one of the three or maybe all of the three because nobody, Marcus, nobody I know builds a great company alone. So to all you guys that are out there, fighting a good fight for our freedom, our security, our way of life, who are fighting to put food on the table for their family and entrepreneurship. Just a salute out to you guys. We know how hard you work. It's those ridiculously big dreams. If we can string those together, we can ignite an entrepreneurial revolution. So to the 13 stripes, to the 50 stars, and to that one big, ridiculous dream that's always worth fighting for, yours. Never above you, never below you. Always Always by by your side. side. If you like our entrepreneurial stories, if you like the messages that we bring uh, that inspire, uh, if you want a little more Mark Haney, not everybody does, but if you do, feel free to subscribe, feel free to be part of our community, engage, comment, share. Uh, I want to get to know you better. You want to get to know me better. Follow me on all our social media platforms at The Mark Haney. I look forward to knowing you better and uh, let's get to know each other better so we can help build these businesses that we love.